changing happens to classify the residents in our community. For those of you that are not familiar, the Grand River Council on Aging is a registered uh, charity, always looking for volunteers and or for dollars. And we're the organization that is uh, dedicated to encouraging the development of an age-friendly community. Um, and we do that by taking the voice of lived experience of older adults and share that with the younger people that are involved with planning and are in the aging process um, as to what they can look forward to and or uh, plan for as they age in the aging process. So we're not old people for old people. We are for everybody from age five to 105. And why I say go, go slow, go and no go, Go, go are those residents in the community that can get up and go and do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. Where slow go, something's slowing them down. It could be chronic, could be a, a long-term uh, problem. And uh, it could be uh, short-term, could be due to an accident. Um, and then the no-go, um, of course, they're stuck where they are. And all those services that we are used to going and getting when we're go-go and or slow-go have to go to the no-go's. And in, in the time of COVID, we're all slow-go's and some of us are no-go's. So it just goes to show that can, we can go through the process uh, as we uh, go, live our daily aspects of living. Um, this morning, we are going to uh, go through a... Um, uh, workshop and before I do that I want to introduce two people who will speak later at the end. One is Linda Moyer who is with the Grand River Council on Aging Administrative Support and she'll talk to you at the end and the other is Chris Henderson with the City of Brantford and he's the one that organized and put these uh, programs all together. That's a result of the City of Brantford actually uh, taking part with the Council on Aging in develop developing a community impact report where those older adults provided 628 suggestions around things that could be done in the community that relate to making sure it's age friendly for the years to come. And the City of Brantford developed its own age friendly, healthy aging, age friendly uh, um, strategy and this is part of it so we will thank Chris for all his work and the fact that uh, we enjoy working with him and uh, now having said that um, I'm going to introduce our speaker and it's always a pleasure to introduce our speaker um, this is Deanna Wren and uh, she is a public health nurse with the uh, Brent County uh, Board of Health she a health unit and she's been there for 20 years, and her experience has included school health, smoking cessation, healthy eating, early cancer uh, detection, mental health, and family health. And on these days, of course, she's all tied up with the COVID and how it impacts what she's doing. But she's also the person with the health unit that is involved with healthy aging. So she uses all that experience in that healthy aging program. and. Uh, She's passionate about seniors. She's dedicated to educating us uh, about healthy lifestyles and the prevention of injury. Now she uh, talked to us, uh, she started off our workshops and uh, around healthy aging. And here she is finishing up this month with uh, talking to us about how to prevent injury, which uh, falls are the major cause of um, injury to the older population. So she's going to talk to us about that. But one thing I do want to mention, uh, Deanna is a member of the Board of Directors of the Grand River Council on Aging. The Health Unit is a partner with the Council on Aging. She also chairs the uh, Education Committee. So she's really involved in getting out the messages that we in the older population need to hear. So other community organizations that include uh, things planning with seniors that she's involved with are the Senior Safety Group and the Brand Elder Abuse Awareness Committee. So I'm going to turn it over to Deanna and she's going to take us through how we can prevent injury in our future. So over to you, Deanna. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to pull up my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, everyone can see that okay? Yep. Okay, so I've um, called this presentation, Let's 
stand strong. And as Lucy said, it is a uh, falls prevention presentation, which I can talk about injury prevention. So some of the statistics regarding falls, one in three seniors over the age of 65 will fall every year. That increases to one in two seniors when you reach the age of 85 and over. That will help it fall every year. So um, injuries account for 40% 40, 40 of falls results in serious injuries, including hip fractures. And seniors account for about 40% 40% of injury hospitalizations in Ontario. So these are fairly new statistics. Um, however, they have not changed a lot over the past, I'd say, 10 years. Uh, falls continue to be the number one cause of injury in older adults. As we age, uh, we're more likely to have a serious injury from a fall and our recovery time is slowed. Falls can threaten independence. The main thing that happens um, is hip fractures, and sometimes when that happens, it can result in um, needing to be put into a long-term care uh, facility or sometimes even death as the result of a hip fracture. So it's a very um, serious injury that can occur uh, from falls. Where do falls occur? The, about half of them occur in the home. And falls are associated with common activities that we do every day, walking, household chores, and using the stairs. So there is some good news, uh, but most falls are predictable and preventable. So there's something that you can do to prevent falls. And I'm gonna highlight 10 tips for you today. So tip number one, check your home for hazards. Because half of the half of falls occur in the home, um, our environment is very important. So we're gonna go through some rooms in the home where falls typically happen and how to prevent them. So a big one is the bathroom, of course. Uh, slips in the tub are common. So getting in and out of the tub, using a rubber mat, um, inside the tub is very helpful to prevent slips. Some of the new tubs do have surfaces um, that are raised um, that do prevent slipping, but over time those deteriorate, so it's best to have a rubber mat. And you can pick this up at like Walmart or uh, Shoppers, any, any pharmacy. And after you have either a shower or um, a bath, to take up that rubber mat and make sure you hang it up, uh, because it does um, get moldy if you leave it down. So a rubber mat. Also, when you're getting into the tub, it's also good to have a non-slip mat on the outside of the tub as well, so that when you come out um, to dry yourself off, you've got some um, good base of support. Um, so getting in and out of the tub or shower and on and off the toilet, um, it's good to have grab bars installed. And it's best if this, this, these are installed uh, by professionals because they really do need to be put into a stud into the wall so that you have the proper um, support needed when you're grabbing them that, that they um, you know, stay anchored into the wall. So grab bars are great. Um, a raised toilet seat does help um, if you're having issues getting on and off the toilet because the raised toilet seat often has grab bars that you can use to help yourself um, put your weight your arms and then lift yourself up. So they're very, very helpful. Of course, in the bathroom, water is an issue. Um, so being cognizant of that and making sure to wipe up water immediately um, so that you don't slip. And then I'm sure some of you get up during the night to use the bathroom. I know I do too. Um, so you wanna have a well-lit area from your bedroom, to the bathroom so that you can see where you're going along that path and of course the path needs to be clear and using a night light in the bathroom also helps um, at nighttime so that you can um, you know sort of see your surroundings and know uh, where you're going. In terms of the kitchen for falls hazards climbing on either chairs or stools 
to reach items or maybe change a light bulb in the kitchen. Um, it can, those things can cause falls. Sometimes when we're working up overhead, we get dizzy and um, that can uh, lead to a fall as well. So one of the strategies here is to move those items that you use most often to lower shelves. Um, or even drawers are even really good for pots and pans uh, because they make it quite easy for you, for you to get at when you can pull the drawer out. If you need to use a step ladder, um, there you get one with a handrail um, at the back so that if you're if you're leaning forward and need to get something and you're kind of a little off balance, you have something to hold on to. That's very helpful. Not sure if this is an issue so much anymore. I know there's a lot of um, uh, cordless items, but if you do have appliances with long cords, just be um, careful that they're tucked, tuck the cords, the power cords at the back of the counter so they're not hanging over the counters and um, becoming a trip hazard. Especially if you have an island, uh, that is an issue. Of course, scatter mats. Uh, and carpeting that's not well secured, any, any type of flooring that's not well secured in the kitchen or anywhere in the house could be an issue in terms of falls. Um, so if you're gonna use any uh, mats to you know, stand on while you're cooking or washing the dishes or what have you, uh, make sure that they're non-slip, that they have a non-slip backing. If for some reason you have one that you love and it doesn't have a non-slip backing, you can purchase two-sided tape and put that around the edges of your mat and secure it down so that um, it's not a fall hazard. Always make sure that your flooring, whether it's tile, linoleum, or carpeting, is well secured so that it's not uh, lifting and you could possibly trip on it. In terms of hazards in the living room and the bedroom, uh, clutter can be one of those um, false hazards, so remove, removing any clutter or obstacles that are in the way of, of your walking path um, to get to your bedroom or living room. In the living room, if you have electrical cords, make sure that they're uh, tucked up behind the furniture and there's cord clips that you can purchase so that you can tuck them around the uh, baseboards um, along the wall. Rushing is a cause of falls for sure. So making sure that you have a phone that you can get to um, easily. So a cell phone is always helpful to have it nearby or even using a cordless type of phone. It's good to have a phone beside your bed at night in case um, you know you, you need you need to call someone or there's you know you need to access 911 during the night or whatever. It's nice to have one beside your bed as well. Just a little bit more about the bedroom. Uh, people have talked to me about their bedspread sometimes being an issue or their sheets hanging over. Um, so just be cognizant of your bed sheets and your uh, duvet, comforter, whatever you have uh, on top of the bed as well, um, because sometimes um, they can be issues um, when you're getting out of bed, especially during the night to use the bathroom. Several falls occur on the stairs. Um, so there are many stair hazards in the home. So not um, having dark stairwells that are not well lit are an issue. So if you can have light switches installed at the top of the stairs so that you can turn it on and then at the bottom so you can turn it off would be best. Um, if you have any stairs that um, where you can't make out the edges of the stairs, you can always um, put some type of tape bright tape, color tape so that you can um, know where the edge of the step is and you can mark it. Handrails are important uh, to have on stairs. Ideally, you want to have handrails on both sides of um, the, the stairs. Using reading glasses um, or bifocals. So they can become issues when you use the stairs. So you want to remove any reading glasses uh, before using the stairs. And if you have bifocals, making sure to readjust um, to look uh, through the right part of your lens when using the stairs. 
clutter on stairs is also an issue. I'm not sure if I have that one. No, nope, I don't. Um, so being sure to uh, remove any clutter on the stairs and taking your time with stairs for sure. So those are sort of the home hazards. Tip number two is um, to wear comfortable and supportive shoes with soft rubber soles and a good tread. So this is important inside the home as well as outside the home. Sometimes people wear um, those furry, fuzzy animal slippers. Um, they are not um, the best in terms of uh, falls hazards. So you wanna wear something that's supportive of your ankle. Um, if you're using stairs with carpeting, if you're wearing slippers, it can become quite slippery. So making sure even in the home that you have something that has a soft rubber sole and good support around the ankle to prevent falls. Of course, when you're outside, this is also very important. Right now, there's a lot of wet leaves on the ground, which can be a false hazard. And then we have winter coming soon. Um, so ice and snow are also an issue. Tip number three, using assistive devices if you need them, canes, walkers, uh, that have been prescribed and fitted by a healthcare professional. This is very important. Um, so if you're borrowing something from a friend, a, a cane or a walker, just make sure that you uh, take it into um, one of the home health uh, components of like, you know, Rexall or Shoppers Driver or something like that, so that the device can be readjusted and fitted for your height. Because um, not only can you fall, but you can also sustain other injuries if you're using devices that are not fitted for yourself, because you might be causing other um, muscle or uh, you know problems if you're if you're leaning forward or, or not using a device that is suited for you. So in terms of some community resources that you can access, um, safety at home program. So this is a program that is still going on. Um, it is a program run through VON and it's a free program that you can access. And uh, what, it, what it normally does, I'm not sure you know, what they've modified for COVID, but uh, your home can be assessed uh, by um, the safety at home coordinator and she will look for any sort of safety hazards in the home and make recommendations uh, in terms of how to improve your home for safety. Uh, she will also make referrals to community resources as well, depending on what your needs are and can assist you with getting bath um, sorry, grab bars installed in the bathroom. So it's a great program that is free. OTs to go, that stands for Occupational Therapist. And this is a program based out of Hamilton, but the good thing is, is that they will come into your home uh, where you are. So they can help you um, apply for assistive devices, uh, filling out the forms for funding, uh, help you get an assistive device, show you how to use it, um, and then also um, they look at maintenance of the assistive devices as well. Another free program. Um, our local LIN, um, they can connect you with, if needed, home care services, um, such as physiotherapy or an occupational therapist, if you need that um, as well. So there's lots of different options that you can use in terms of uh, making sure that your home is safe and that you have the proper equipment that you need um, for mobility purposes. Tip number four, uh, this is a, a very important tip uh, about medication. So reviewing all your medication with your doctor and your pharmacist on a regular basis. Actually, I've noticed when I've been driving around lately that uh, many of the pharmacies have posted on their outdoor signs to, to ask about a med check. Uh, so a pharmacy, there's a program called Meds Check Program, and a pharmacist will meet with you at least once a year to go over your medications. If you're on four or more medications, I think it is. And uh, they will sit with you to go over all the medications that you're taking. So that includes any over-the-counter medications, vitamins, herbal supplements, and of course your prescription medications. So if you have any questions about the medications, um, how you should take them, uh, what to take them with or not um, take them with, 
then the pharmacist can do that education with you. It is important that you keep a list of your medications with you at all times. Um, this comes in handy if there's an emergency situation. Um, and also it is good to have a list in your home. So maybe on your fridge or in your fridge so that if paramedics is called, that they, that's where they look. They typically look on the fridge or inside the fridge for a list of medications that you're taking. So you can write your own list of medications or you can get this uh, from your pharmacist as well, print out. So you just have to remember to keep it up to date. Certain medications that you take may increase, increase your risk of falls. The common ones are blood pressure medication, um, some types of um, medication for depression or um, benzodiazepines. So those are the ones that you use for sleep um, and even some pain medications as well. So they, they can often increase your risk of falls. So knowing that is also very helpful because you, you know, you, you want to make sure that your dosage is correct, but then also that um, if uh, you know you are at risk of falls with certain medications, that you can take appropriate precaution. Also, uh, some medications can interact with each other, increasing their effect and their side effects. So this is why it's good to meet with the pharmacist to go over which ones to take and when, so that you can limit those interactions. Of course, drinking alcohol with medications can also um, increase their effect and can potentially be harmful. So um, those are some sort of things to keep in mind. So these are the, that's what I mentioned before, the meds check program is excellent. I encourage you to take advantage of that. And then having some type of medication record with you, whether it's a booklet that, that you can get at the pharmacist sometimes, or you can just create your own. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Also, it's good to include your allergies on there as well um, and any conditions um, that are important to know about, such as asthma or diabetes. Okay, tip number five have your vision and your hearing checked every year. So, um, these uh, checks are covered by uh, OHIP over the age of 65. So it is good to get both of these done because um, your vision obviously can affect, um, you know, your mobility and um, your depth perception. So that can increase falls if that's off. Hearing as well, if you have any problems with your middle ear that affects your balance. So that is also a good thing to get checked. Tip number six, eating a healthy, balanced diet, drinking lots of water, and limiting alcohol. So diet is important for many reasons, but um, if you have low blood sugar or you have diabetes and you, you need to keep your blood sugar regulated, eating um, protein and fiber help to keep you um, sustained, feeling full longer. So that's important and helps to keep your blood sugar levels up. Drinking plenty of water, this is especially important in um, the summer months when it's hot and humid, but anytime really. Um, so you don't want to wait to drink water when you're feeling thirsty because it's, it's almost too late at that point. You're already dehydrated. So you want to keep your water intake um, up all day. The other thing to determine if you're drinking enough water or not is to look at the color of your urine. If it is uh, bright yellow or just even yellow, um, you're not getting enough water in. You want it to be very pale yellow, almost clear, and that means you're getting enough uh, liquid in your diet. Alcohol, um, of course we talked already about this, about limiting the amount of alcohol. Um, as you age, you don't metabolize alcohol as quickly, so it builds up in your system quicker. So a little bit, a little goes a longer way. So um, just uh, remember that. Tip number seven, <clears throat> exercise, exercise, and exercise. Exercising daily um, is one of the best ways to prevent falls. Uh, focusing on strength and balance are very, very, very important. To improve your muscles, uh, your bones, your reaction time, 
um, and of course your balance. So some types of exercises to incorporate are, um, you know, Pilates is a great exercise, anything with weights. Uh, tai Chi is excellent for falls prevention. There's a lot of good research on Tai Chi and the benefits of Tai Chi for falls prevention. Uh, yoga is also an excellent um, exercise as well. Anything that you're, um, you're doing to improve your, your strength and your balance. So in terms of some community resources, um, Safe Zone is uh, offering programs. I don't know if they're offering them in person. I think they were looking at doing that. They are, I see Linda nodding. Um, and they did have an online program as well. The Beckett Adult Leisure Center, they're not open yet that I know of, um, but they do also offer um, the Healthy Aging Without Walls program. Um, which has many different components. I'm not sure if there's an exercise component in there. Healthy Aging Without Walls, no. Okay, no, there isn't. The Wayne Gretzky Sports Center is um, open. And then uh, the Grand River Community Health Center, I don't believe they're running any community programs currently, but they used to have a lot of physical activity programs. And then also some of the community centers are um, running programming as well. So you have to just check, but there is a lot of online programming available. Um, the Adult Recreation Therapy Center was offering online programming, um, as well as uh, the Y uh, was offering online programming as well. So there are some options available for sure. The other thing is you can also just look at videos and do your own type of exercise. Um, in your own home as well. There are many videos, yoga videos, all, all tight, anything you want is on basically on YouTube, so it's all free. Tip number eight. So if you have issues with incontinence, um, incontinence um, causes um, people to rush, right? To try to rush to get to the bathroom. So there, is, there, there are things that can be done um, for um, incontinence, both bladder and bowel. So there is a continence care clinic. It is based out of Hamilton um, and they, I believe they do not do house calls, so you have to go to them. But the VON also has a continence care nurse. Um, so if you're having issues with continence, you could probably ask for a referral from your family doctor to the continence care nurse um, through the VON and um, she can educate you about different strategies to try um, to uh, limit um, or main, manage uh, bladder and bowel uh, issues. So tip number nine is to um, recognize what's going on in your own body and recognize changes that occur. So if you're feeling faint all of a sudden or dizzy, or unsteady on your feet, or you're having more falls. It could be that you have an infection going on. Um, it could be the result of medication that you're taking. Maybe you have an inner ear infection. There are many reasons. So these are not normal things that occur as a result of a aging. You shouldn't feel faint or dizzy or unsteady. Usually it means something's going on. So make sure you, you know, advocate for yourself, call your doctor and find out uh, what's happening. And my last tip is taking your time. So again, um, the issue about rushing, taking your time when you're changing positions. Um, so that's basically a lot of times um, during the night or first thing in the morning when you're lying down for a period of time, your blood pools in your lower extremity, so in your feet. And then when you, when you go to stand up too quickly, you get dizzy because you don't have any blood up here in your, in your, um, your brain. So what the best thing to do is, is to, there's a couple things you can do. One, one thing is you can um, pump your calf muscles while you're still lying down. So just um, moving your foot up and down, pumps your calf muscle, which gets the blood circulating. There's um, valves in, in your calves that help to circulate the blood. So you can do that. Then also you can, um, when you get up, sit at the side of your bed for a minute or two and just get the blood flowing before you before you get up. Uh, using the stairs, uh, making sure that you're not carrying things 
when you're using the stairs, if you need to hold on to the stair rail, and then also taking you know, it very slowly one step at a time. Uh, I remember I was at a church one time doing a presentation and someone said that she actually counts the stairs. So she knows that, like she knows there's 13 steps at that church. So when she uses the stairs, she's counting out loud. So that way she knows she's not gonna miss, miss a step. So that's another thing too, making sure you, you, you sort of know your surroundings and know how many steps so that you don't accidentally um, skip a step. So those are the top 10 tips. Um, and I can send this presentation to Chris so that he can email it out. Um, and then this last slide here is some information about how to get up. Um, if you have uh, had a fall in the home or, or somewhere else. Um, so you just wanna make sure that, that you don't have any injuries, any head injuries or anything like that. If, if, you, if you are injured, then call for help. Um, if you have a lifeline or a cell phone nearby, that's great. Uh, always cover, if you can, if you can cover yourself with a blanket to stay warm. If you're not injured, then what you wanna do is basically get to a piece of sturdy furniture that you can use to help get you to stand up. So the best thing to do is to roll onto your side, crawl over to a piece of furniture, and then use your hands to steady yourself on the furniture. You're gonna kneel and then um, use your arms to help uh, get you up and, you, and your legs. Um, so you bring one knee forward um, in number four there. Bring one knee forward and place that on the floor and then use the strength of your arms to push yourself up. Um, and then basically pivot and sit down until you can kind of get your bearings and see if you actually need um, assistance, um, need to be checked out by your doctor or need to um, seek uh, medical attention through 911. So those are the steps there to get up from a fall. Are there any questions from anybody or comments? 